Hey everyone, it's Maggie back here with vlog, vlog number 9, I think. And it has been way too long, so hello. Uh, how are you guys doing? I am doing swell. Uh, <laughs> we have spent the last week playing kind of light and lovely stuff, and um, just a couple of things to talk about today. Um, first off, I, I mentioned in my last video that I got Elevensies as a Kickstarter reward. This is a card game from Adventureland Games, and they're most famous for making sushi go and what they've built here is basically a you know, grown-up version of too many monkeys from game right games where you have a face down tableau you play cards and they're numbered and it depends on where they are in the tableau and so eleven z's is a tea time game you're trying to build the best tea spread to impress your friends so you have a face down tableau of eight cards and they're numbered in your head two through nine. So on a turn if I were to play a three I'd play it into the second spot, play it face up, take whatever card was face down there and put it in my hand and take the action that's written on the, the number three. And I would continue doing that on the corner of each card it has a little number of tablespoons from one to three and um, after you have a few cards flipped up you can play your elevensies card and that signals that it's tea time and whoever has the most of those tablespoons will win two sugar cubes for the round. Uh, yeah. I could go either way. I would pass if I saw it for full retail. I might pick it up if I had kind of newer gamers, like 12 to 14 year olds, or I wanted something um, to show my grandma. Um, the tea time is not the part that didn't do it for me. It was the gameplay. It just is stagnant and boring and you kind of take the same turn over and over and you're playing rounds until you get to seven sugar cubes. So that could be upwards of four rounds and by that time everyone's just ready to bolt and run run away. So it is beautiful and the art is gorgeous. So if, if you want to try it, do, but I wouldn't buy it. Not for dollars. Um, next we had a request for Viva Java the Dice Game. So this is the Dice version of Viva Java, which was um, kind of a Dice Hate Me games from the Unpub a couple years ago. And that one worked from six to eight players. So I think the Dice Game was an attempt to pull the number of players down to something more palatable, like two to four. And on this turn, on this game, you were trying to make the most points. Um, so there's a little paper card it's like this and it has a number of beans at the top and you kind of scratch those off as you get points and if you can finish those you win the game. So on a turn you roll the dice and unless you have special abilities it's just the ones and then you either make a featured blend and or you research the best color that you rolled. So if I rolled two red I could research red twice. Before the game starts, you're going to flip over cards telling you what each of the research does. So red would do a certain thing, white would give you re-rolls, and they would each do something different and you would know beforehand. The featured blend itself is kind of like a poker hand, so if I have three of a kind, it's going to beat your two of a kind. And the colors of the dice also have a hierarchy, so a black is the best, whereas green or red follows that. So if I roll for a featured blend, and I have a better blend than you had, I would take the blend from you, put my dice on it, and get a point. If that blend can survive until my next turn, I get extra victory points. Um, this is a game I would buy for my favorite barista, for my coffee-loving cousin who doesn't necessarily game that often. Definitely casual, giftable game, but not necessarily something I would buy for someone who played a lot of strategy games. It is luck-dependent, um, for winning. I think if you have equally skilled players, it is going to be the person who rolls the best. If you have asymmetrical, if someone's actually better at games than another person, that other person could still probably pull it out even if they didn't know what they were doing. Uh, there is a fair amount of dice rolling and that's a good thing for a dice game, but not a good thing for most gamers. For the price, it's very fun. The papers that you have to write everything on, I didn't love. I would laminate those. But overall, a quality game in the middle of the road. Everything, Something's got to be middle of the road or else amazing things aren't amazing. 
uh, we played our game of CO2 that I was talking about last time. So this was a much more casual crowd. And by casual, I don't mean like worst players. I just mean people that weren't going to be bloodthirsty. So it was my partner, Brian, our friends, Mal and Tony. We all got together to play this game of CO2. And we're strolling along, strolling along, trying to remember all the rules, trying to get everything right. And at the end of the fourth round, we're feeling pretty confident. The world's doing pretty well. We're getting all the things built. And during the fifth round, which is the final round, that's when we figured out that it turns into a big grudge match fifth round because at this point it's way too late to kill the world. And so now it's every man for himself trying to get a few extra victory points. Um, I did not win that game, surprisingly enough. Uh, but it definitely took the table by surprise that at some point the attitude just shifted and it turned into, well, I wasn't going to do that for you because that gives you points. It's time to make points. Uh, there are a lot of games that kind of do this. They have that, that point at which they turn into point building machines. And a lot of that came at the end of the game because you basically, you, you're trying to control regions and regions have these little purple discs called CEPs. And those CEPs directly, um, they give you money based on your market at the end of the game. And money is two to one victory points. So the end got a little tousled. But I think now that we know that that's how that happens, we'll all be looking out for that fifth round being kind of the, the butt head of the group. And we will all know that coming in. It'll be a little easier the next time. We're going to try and schedule it within a month so that we don't forget all the rules again because that is such a pain. Uh, that designer just he really likes rules, all of them. Um, but that's all for now. I will be back talking about some Kickstarters if you guys haven't seen Liftoff uh, or Fidelitas. So I will see you all later. Bye-bye-bye.